All right, welcome back to the MMocracy stream. We are still down here outside of Chief, Chief Rock Gus camping the Circlet of Shadows. Just holding down this one room for now. We had a real close call on the last episode, but we, we were able to live. That close call is one of the reasons why I'm not pulling anything outside of this room. I don't want to lose the camp. It was it took about 50 minutes to break in. So we are playing it safe. I think I ended up at about 5% health when I feigned. Uh because I, I think I had a feign fail and then there was three mobs on me. It was it was very bad. But I got lucky, I was able to feign in between casts and uh, killed off Call of Bones right away so I didn't deplete my own health. I was able to get a pet resummoned in the room. Got Jerarn here, my trusty companion. And was able to uh, recover. So the dilemma that I'm having is, do I want to attempt to pull from outside the room again? I'm debating if I pull the Legate here, will he bring the Bone Slaver or not? And then we have a Pather here. He's uh, He's wandered up there, but... That's the one I'm definitely keeping an eye on, too, because if I pull from outside the room and then that pather is out there, he'll come, too. That's what happened last time that I almost wiped. I uh, played a little Fantasy Star online with my mom last night she's my mom is a veteran fantasy star online player she started all the way back in the xbox days uh, over the summer i went home to visit her we busted out the old xbox we played on fantasy star online offline obviously because the xbox servers definitely have been down for probably 20 years now or maybe 18 years and then uh, i told her mom you know there's still there's still a server you can play. You just have to get it on your PC and there's other people playing. And she was interested. So I got her hooked up with a private server for Fantasy Star Online. It's the Ephinia server. And yeah, she plays it like all the time. I can just log in. I don't even have to text her or anything. And I can log in and just go through the rooms. And I'm like almost guaranteed to find her when she's not at work. She's level 200 now, which is the max level. It's kind of funny. Uh, so we did a little bit of uh, farming last night. It was a good time. PSO is good, a good uh, MMO light. It's kind of more on the, the side of Diablo than it is on like an EQ. It's got the random drops. It's got the, the rare spawns. I happen to enjoy it. I didn't really ever get into Fantasy Star Universe. That was the sequel to PSO. I tried it a few times. I tried to like it. But uh, like most things, I, I tend to prefer classic. And PSO is definitely classic. Shoot, I think that game came out in Let me let me look it up. When did PSO come out? December 21st, 2000. You want to talk about a game that was ahead of its time. Hmm, if I pull you, 
Are you going to social these two? I guess when it really comes down to it, what is what do I stand to gain versus what I stand to lose? So two extra mobs worth of experience when I'm not really here to get experience. And I stand to lose a camp that I took almost an hour to get into. So weighing the risk, weighing the reward, very disproportionate. So I'm going to put that to bed. We are not going to pull outside the room. I like how small these beds are. Or like how big the goblins are. Oh, I never noticed. This has a... Has anybody ever seen this writing? Looks like a G, a triangle... Kind of like an S or an L and a U. I don't know if I've ever seen writing like that anywhere else in EQ. Oh, and I just noticed this torch here is shaped like a hand. The sconce for the torch. Looks like a hand complete with claws. One thing I like to do when I have a lot of time is I like to look at some of the art assets. I don't think the, the video, or excuse me, like the artwork in this game gets enough credit. This game really was ahead of its time as well, as far as the, like the being a 3D, fully 3D modeled world. And yeah, it looks rudimentary by today's standards. But you gotta remember, back in the day, this was a uh, this was a pretty big deal. We crawled up under the tent here. Oh no! Don't get stuck. We got a little busted chair here. And some boxes. So there's your tour of the bodyguard room, one of the bodyguard rooms. Yeah, I get it. It's tough to fill some space here. It's tough to fill time. I do like to stream Mr. Best Friend regardless, like just to document his his travels. And the progress. So I wouldn't want to be doing this off off stream, even though there is a lot of dead space here. Just in the event I get a circle circle of shadows. What am I gonna do? Like I guess real quick hit live or try to record it. I think that is the uh just the way EQ is. You have periods of high activity and then periods of low activity. We also got a little bit unlucky because if this was a melee mob that was very easy to control, I may be more apt to try to pull from out here. But with it being a legate and a bone slaver, those are the two worst mobs right out there. Legates because they heal and they heal for a lot, and then bone slavers because their their damage is just so high. I think the bone slaver is a like a necromancer. Yeah, so they do like a life tap. They do some really nasty dots.
if this camp goes into a second day, I can experiment with trying the the right hand mobs versus the the right hand room versus the, this room, and see if that is a little bit better experience. I think the risk there is the pather goes right through that area. But it's almost time. It's almost time for the next uh, next set of mobs to spawn. Maybe we'll get lucky and we can get out of here. I hope everybody's having a good weekend. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, I hope your your day has been good, your day or your, or your night. I've gotten a lot of love on the YouTube lately. Love those guys. I was like really shocked. I used to upload these to YouTube and they would get like five views, 10 views. And I just figured, and it was, it was people like clicking on, looking, clicking off. Uh, but now there's a handful of people who are actually watching pretty much start to finish and following the journey of Mr. Best Friend. And that's a big reason why I'm not doing a lot of stuff without recording, without being on live on Twitch. Even when there are points like this where there's really not a lot going on. I'd like to think it's something good that people can put on in the background as they're doing chores. Uh, maybe playing another game. And then just kind of following along with the story. <clears throat> I used to watch like a wizardry, the game Wizardry 8 Let's Play when I was playing Path of Exile back in the day. And uh, I also liked watching uh, Final Fantasy, typically the older Final Fantasies. I'm trying to think what else. What other Let's Plays have I watched? There's there's a very, not very well-known Let's Player. He used to go by Josh Victor. I think that was his actual real name. Uh, but now he goes by Classic Gaming Replayed or something. And he did the entire Fantasy Star series, starting with the one on Master System and going all the way up through Fantasy Star 4 on Sega Genesis. And he's a pretty good Let's Player. So if you like... Um, OG Fantasy Star, the actual JRPG version, not the MMO Fantasy Star Online. Uh, I recommend giving him a, a look. I just noticed my pig parse did not pick up on that. Really wish pig parcel was more reliable too on just picking up on the the spawn timers. I know I'm like running down pig parse. If, if the pig parse developer watches this, I love your program. I know you're doing it all for free. I appreciate you. These cave hunters, they, they do pretty good melee damage. I saw my root fall off, so... Good that I caught it, because the pather is right there. That would be like three mobs coming right for me if he ran out there.
go ahead and get get rid of some of this spare change. One stat that I wish EQ would track, I know it doesn't track any stats, is uh, it would be nice to know how much spare change have I destroyed? All the silver, all the copper. Some players, I'm sure, destroy gold. I'm not quite there yet. I'm not rich enough to destroy the gold. Maybe one day. Okay, the next spawn is the one we're after. Come on, bodyguard. I went ahead and took off Call of Bones because there's, I think, about two and a half to three minutes between them. Then whenever they spawn, I just jump up, throw Call of Bones back on, and then I get Drain Spirit back in my number one slot. I feel like getting your spell bar just right is, is kind of a talent that you have to develop in EQ. I typically hot swap numbers one and seven and leave the rest of these alone. And I think I probably need to hotkey Feign Death at this point. I have yet to hotkey it. That's uh, bad on me. I know. All right, we got a Depredator here. Let's make sure we root him. Oops, forgot to put Drain Spirit back on. <laughs> Not having a whole lot of good luck on the bot getting the bodyguard to spawn. We're on two hours in this spot. Actually, a little over an hour, because... Uh, it took us about an hour to get in here. It was kind of rough getting in here. Do people drive crazy where you guys live? Where I live, they drive like Jerks. I don't even think they realize they're doing it. I think it's just normal for them. It's kind of like when I was in Italy. When I was in Italy, everyone drove like a jerk, so nobody was a jerk. In fact, if you were driving normal, normal by like American standards, uh, you were actually a jerk because you were like holding up traffic. It was it was kind of bizarre. Here, it's kind of a 50-50 mix uh, where I'm at. Like you have your, your old people, they drive kind of conservatively, and then you have a lot of people who just blow past each other, cut each other off. I don't think they even realize they're, they're being jerks. Very frustrating, though. I come from like the upper Midwest where if you accidentally cut someone off, you're like, 
slow down, get next to them, and you're like, sorry. Like, like everybody's super nice. And I don't think my brain, even though I left there probably over 20 years ago or about 20 years ago now, I still don't think my brain is fully adjusted to driving anywhere else. I've finally just given up on the road rage though. Like I don't I don't road rage as bad as I used to. I just kind of let it happen. I'm just like, "All right, whatever." It's funny to see people, I mean, they'll they'll get behind you, they'll be honking, flashing their lights. They'll blow by you. And then uh whoa, he like his nuke pushed my pet way back. They'll be flashing their lights. They'll be honking at you. And then they get stuck at the exact same light as you. And you pull up next to them and you're like, hey, yeah. Well done. Bravo, sir. But at least after a year of being here, I've, I've at least... Uh, acquiesced a little bit so I don't get as mad man when I first moved here I would get so mad I'd be like what is wrong with these people I was like I'm gonna end up getting shot because I rolled I rolled down my window I used to roll down my window and yell at people and they'd be looking at me like what do you want like, what's wrong with you? Go ahead and do new buffs. Get some fresh ones up. Those old buffs are getting kind of stale. I kind of, I wish like a high level player would come through here. Wipe these dudes out. That way, if there were solo pulls, I would just grab them. There are five people down here in Droga. I think one of them is right above me at the ledge. I'm going to guess the other three are probably just out wandering, collecting goblin skins. My, uh, my daughter texted me. Yeah, I feel like we're going to... We're just going to have to eat the slow experience for now until we get this circle to shadows and hopefully it's not going to turn into another spectral crusader camp where we're here for 20 plus hours. <laughs> Further up in this zone, I was really happy about the 20 minute respawn timer. In this spot, I would prefer the, the good old 12-minute respawn timer like Dalnir has. I feel like I could clear all of them in, in 12 minutes and have a little bit of time to med before the next one. Or have them broken it up 
broken up just perfectly. Grimlust asks, are you doing Chief as well since you're right here? Uh, Chief is camped. The player uh, D4 damage, assuming he's a Dungeons and Dragons player. Yeah, you can see him casting here. He has uh, Chief camped. Otherwise, I, I would like to. I don't know why people... So I'm going to pull up the wiki here. Here's Chief Rockgus. I see he drops the Essence of Doll, which is... That's not a bad little monk weapon if you don't have anything else. The Idol of the Thorned, which is a Strength 7, Stamina 10, uh, uh, ranged. And then a dagger that gives you whiz three or strength three, whiz two, int two. Looking at these drops, I don't know why people camp Chief Rockgus. Like, are are any of those really that good? I think maybe the idol would probably be better than my. Sarnak Ceremonial Dagger, it's only got 3 int on it. It's only giving me about 24 mana right now. I say right now because I think int, your mana per int scales as you get higher level. I think. So maybe that's what people are after, is that idle? Just for the stamina, but yeah, I don't know. And yeah, right now I'm just a little bit scared to pull anything outside the room because I don't want to jeopardize my my spot in here. I feel like the moment I pull one of these, it's going to grab, like if I pull this guy, it's going to grab these two. If I pull this guy, it's going to grab that one, and then he's going to chain this one. So I'm just trying to, just trying to get the circlet here. And then we'll, uh, We'll go somewhere and get some good experience later. But if we got the circlet today, that would be Earring of Essence last night. Circlet of Shadow today, that'd be pretty good. Then I'd probably just go back up to the pool area, power my way up through. I think I'm going to stay here till 49. And then at 49, move on to somewhere else. Where, uh, Grimlust, if you're still here, what, what do you recommend for 49 for solo? A lot of people are pointing me towards City of Mist, but. There's like so many players in there. I don't really want to be working around other people. I don't want a repeat of the juke incident. Other people also can train you. Another option, I would get some experience. It wouldn't be like a crazy high amount of experience. Is um. If I could kill Zalgaz at 49 and just commit to a really long Zalgaz grind to try to get that clicky fear staff, 
They estimate it's 80 to 120 hours. And that's for this item here, Staff of the Dreaded Gaze. It is a must equip. I didn't realize that. But it does have int 6 mana 40, so I would probably even out. I'd probably be pretty close to the same amount of mana. And it, I mean, it looks so cool too. Look at that. Other than the fact that this is on a gnome. So it's all tiny, but I bet it would look way cooler on my Ixar. That gets you a clicky invoke fear with a, a pretty long cast time, seven seconds versus the 2.5 on your regular. Let's see, Grimless says 49 is a little hard. You get a huge power increase at 51 with Splurt. You get to Root Rot, but before that I'm not so sure. So at 51, I would have to find Splurt to have it right at 51. And it just says Kunark, on the wiki it just says where to obtain Kunark level 50 plus mob drop. <laughs> Grimlust says you could start your Howling Stones journey. Yeah, I would have to get the key from Zalgaz. There was there was another thing that was kind of putting me off to Howling Stones. What was it? Oh, just not having a summon corpse. And being really worried about losing everything. Or losing multiple levels trying to drag a corpse out. Grimlust says you won't be going into any of the wings. Ah, okay. What you have to worry about is two mobs being at the spawn in. Okay. What, uh, do you know what the two mobs are? So I can figure out if they're... Are they higher than the rest of the mobs, or are they like the lowest mobs in the zone? Where it starts off easy, and then it gets harder as you go. Grimlust says they're the lowest mobs, so that's good. And are they typically casters or melee? If they're melee, it could be as simple as like you spawn in, drop a root on a couple of them. <laughs> Grimless says, can vary, usually melee that harm touches. Ooh. Like the loading screen isn't even up and you've been harm touched twice for 1200 damage. Alright, there's the... There's the first spawn of the cycle. I was chatting with Grimlust, lost track of time. So we gotta rebuff our pet here. Get collarbones up. Got a decent little, little bit of money down here too. I think I made about 50, 50 plat. Let's see. I think the next one is here in the corner. 
I always try to position myself so I don't get whacked as soon as they spawn in. It's always a very uh, abrupt and rude surprise. You hear that bone crunching sound effect. Especially if you're trying to move and you get hit and stunned and you start spinning. Yeah, I wish we could get a few more spawns to kill in here, but just to get that experience, but man, I don't want to waste a whole hour plus of getting in here. We're at 13 goblin skins though. That's good. Yeah, Grimlust, I'll take a look at, at Howling Stones. And kind of make a d determination. I got to come up with a plan on how to break into the 50s and where I can get my uh, spell drops from. Because I can't just go buy them, obviously. And, and everybody here knows that, but I'm not saying that to demean anybody's intelligence. I'm just stating the obvious that uh, I can't just go grab them from the tunnel. So getting into the 50s where the mobs start getting higher. Uh, health pools is probably going to be the biggest challenge yet for Mr. Best Friend. That's where Solo Cell Phone is really going to come back into play. Grimlust says, I honestly can't think of a better spot for you to try and fish for spells. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Grimlust says, maybe Skyfire Fear Kiting. I have like never done anything there. That that would be interesting. I don't even know if I've set foot in Skyfire. Isn't that one of those zones where it's just a huge open area with a ton of dragons and kind of like burning woods? Everything's just pathing around. Swimming around in a giant bowl of soup. Bowl of mob soup. Does it have like hills? I love hills in those zones because they... Stuff will come up and over the hill, and you're like, oh, sh get away, get away. One of those zones I was reading about, they were saying, like, the, the edges weren't even safe. Like, normally how, how you do it in those types of zones is you go grab a mob and you run all the way out to the edge. Like, over there. That's a good example. You pull them way up on the edge, and then nothing's going to bother you. But I... I think it was either Skyfire or Burning Woods. I was reading even the edges are just covered in mobs. It's like they got they got wise to it. The developers are like, they're using the edges. We can't let that happen. All right, the next one I think is the money spawn. Let's go money spawn. We want to see a goblin bodyguard. And it is a cave hunter. Even just killing these four, I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit of experience. I can't complain. I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm of the mind like, as long as the experience bar is moving in the right direction, i.e., toward the right and not the left, I'm generally pretty happy. Could you get it faster? Sure. But progress is progress. It's 
tell you what, this next spawn needs to happen. Like I'm, my eyeballs are floating. I'm doing the rocking back and forth in my chair. I need to do a a quick run to the room behind me. If you catch my drift, just hit me all of a sudden. Good thing I'm not playing an enchanter. If I was on an enchanter, those are like it's like a fifty fifty shot whenever you try to go pee if you're gonna come back to a naked player at a bind point. Even in a group, sometimes you're like, hey group, watch my pet. I gotta go pee. They freaking root it right on top of you. <laughs> like the pet breaks while you're peeing and they're like, I know, root it, and they root it right on right on top of you. That happened to me once. You come back and you're like, I told you to watch my pet. A goblin stitcher. I've never seen that spawn. What is a goblin? So this just showed up in my chat log. A goblin stitcher begins to cast a spell. Is he rare? It doesn't even say if he's rare. He must not be rare. I've just probably never seen him. He drops an item, goblin scrib scribblings that no one, no known use in classic. There's so many items like that out there. Ah, I got the rude awakening. It'd be really cool to find out, to like discover a quest that no one has discovered in 25 years. Okay. Grab my loot. Hop a squat. Be right back. All right, and I'm back. Why don't we, during our our time here, let's take a look at Skyfire.
So the Skyfire Mountains are level 40 to 60. Let's go to Dangers. This zone is filled with high-level dragon-like creatures, all of whom are aggressive. Also, most seem to social aggro with each other. Most do not see in biz. Most. But the great dragon Talandor certainly does. Okay, what level is he? No big deal. He's just a level 60. I'm sure I could solo him without a pet. Kidding. Certain monsters have unique abilities as well. The Chromadrax. I remember those. I think I fought those on my cleric back in the day. Are notorious for their area of effect dispel attack. The higher level drakes and wyverns can summon you as well. Oh, that's that's fantastic. So even if you get away, you're going to get summoned back. Hunting here is also bad for faction with the outdoor dragons in Kunark, especially Gorinair in the Dreadlands, which can make travel through that zone more dangerous. Oh. I apologize. I'm still on the BRI back screen, and yeah, here's Skyfire. That's what I was reading here. So if you're listening, not watching, no big deal. If you're watching, you're probably looking at the BRB screen and going, what, what is this guy doing? Uh, the wizard portal is known for being dangerous. It appears right in a very busy area in the zone, and many groups who use it find themselves attacked heavily immediately upon appearing in this area. The druid port is safer, but still dangerous, as mobs do path there, so you may be aggroed upon arrival. As far as enemies, it looks like they start in the high 30s. And then there's a good spread all the way up to about 47. And then you start getting into the named mobs, which are low 50s all the way up to 60. Uh, I guess it's something to consider. I'm kind of wondering about the faction hits. Like, uh, how big of a deal is that? Does that really make your life that much harder? Or is it like, eh, you just got to watch out for another very easily identifiable dragon somewhere. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot in the way of unique items or notable loot. Looks like mainly epic, epic quest items. Okay, so that's Skyfire. What about Howling Stones? Howling Stones is considered 50 plus. And the lower end starts in the high 30s again, just like Skyfire. I wonder, so here's here's kind of a concerning thing. So these Sepulchre Skeletons, looks like these spawn at the entrance. They're as low as 42, but they're as high as 53. Do they spawn at 53, level 53 at the entrance? Is it, that could be scary. Or is the entrance like the lower ones, and then the 53s are in the north wing, west wing, and south wing? Some interesting loot on the Undead Oblation. And yeah, it looks like some other skeletons go up to the high 40s. Bottomless Feaster? Is this one of those? It's one of these guys. 
one of the flying sperm monsters. We love those. Yeah, so I don't think it would be an issue at 49 to start there as long as they're not spawning level 53 skeletons right at the right at the front. Let's see. Grimlust says it should not be a big deal. I want to say you're not going to get a level 53 at the entrance but don't have any data to back that up. I appreciate you kind of yeah, being objective there. I would agree that I, I feel like that's a fair assessment that likely you're going to see the lower level mobs at the entrance and then they get higher as they go, just like virtually every other zone in EQ. We just need to knock out this circle of shadows so we can move on. It's kind of crazy to think Mr. Best Friend is level 47. He's come a long way. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever stuck with an EverQuest character as consistently as I have with Mr. Best Friend. He's not anyone else's best friend, but he's he's my Mr. Best Friend. <laughs> Okay, that was cheesy. I know. I'm sorry. He really is, though. I've really enjoyed playing him. Necromancer is awesome. Solo Cell Found is fun. Streaming is fun. It's been a good journey. I'd like to think we're a little over halfway. I'm getting this tremendous feeling of anticipation, though. As I get ready to push into the 50s, I kind of I can feel that the game is going to change. I feel that it's going to get harder. And I'm like ready to get in there. I feel like a, like you're senior in high school again and you're in like March or April of the year. You're ready to start college. You're kind of like, I've been doing this for a while. I'm ready for a change. That's kind of how I'm feeling with Mr. Best Friend. His mobs are going to jump from having 1,800 health to 8,000 health here real quick. Hopefully it's not like real life and in three or four levels I'm going, man, I miss high school. <laughs> I didn't know how good I had it. Right? How many of you have had that? Had that thought? Like all throughout high school, you're like, this is dumb. I can't wait to be an adult. And then you become an adult and you're like, take me back. I want to go back. All right, let's get ready for the next spawn cycle. 30 seconds. Cross your fingers, stream. Hopefully we get a goblin bodyguard. That's what we're here for. We're here for the Circle of Shadows, if you're just joining the stream. The first one's up in 20 seconds. And I have a, about an hour and 10 minutes left to camp this before I have to go get my girlfriend. We got another Madden Berry Knight. Okay, that's interesting because I didn't know he could spawn on this placeholder.
kick that heel. Oh, it's a baby heel. He did like a baby heel. Okay. Oh, okay. We're good. I was like, forgot. I forgot to root him. There's that mountain death belt. That is a HP plus 25. It's got a skin like rock with five charges. AC8. But I can't wear it because it's for warriors, clerics, paladins, and rogues. Enwa, thanks for the raid. Appreciate you. Uh, for those of you joining, if you haven't been to my stream before on the MMocracy, and we are right now doing a solo cell phone, Kunark only Necromancer. And I'm camping the Circlet of Shadows in Temple of Droga. Enwa says, what's up, brother? Make sure to follow y'all. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we're just holding down these four spawns here, and we're hoping for a goblin bodyguard to spawn. Enwa says, I've had a long one. Gotta head out and pay attention to the Eifer. Oh, wife. I was like, yikes. I'm from the Midwest. I know what uh, a hyphen is. Uh oh. This guy's uh, he's taking a chunk out of my pet here. There we go. Well, I appreciate it, Enwa. If you haven't already left, thank you. Let's see if Jiran can get his uh, his health back before the next spawn. We have two minutes. Two minutes on the next one. And we've hit 62% towards level 48. We were just discussing where to go at 49. I'm going to stay in Droga. I'm, I'm level 47. I'm going to stay in Droga till 49. Uh, so if anybody that was on the raid is still here, I'm not, I don't really watch my viewer count, but uh, if you're still here and you have any suggestions for where to take a Necro at level 49 on Kunark, because I'm Kunark only, uh, just let me know. We're kind of talking, me and Grimlust, one of my longtime viewers, we've been talking about options. Enwa says, you're at 16. Oh, that's cool. So we were talking about going to uh, Howling Stones. And I was debating the feasibility of that at 49. Oh, boy. Okay, we have one minute. One minute on the next spawn, and my pet is like 50% health. If it's a bodyguard, if it's the mob we're after, he's going to be a Shadow Knight. And Shadow Knight's harm touch. So I dropped a, a, a heal on him, or more like a life transfer from me to him. And then we're going to have to life tap whatever pops here in 20 seconds. Looks like his health is pretty good now, though. So we got pop here in seven seconds. Let's go bodyguard. And it's a cave hunter. Lame. At least it wasn't a like a bone slaver or a legate. Those are probably my least favorite mobs to kill down here. 
They take a lot of mana to bring down. Yeah, we were talking about Howling Stones, we were talking about possibly Skyfire, but Skyfire sounds kind of scary. Being Kunark only has kind of funneled me into some off-the-beaten-path places. Uh, for those of you Raiders, if you're still here, um, if you want to check out my YouTube, I actually have like an interesting Mr. Best Friend lore video where I tell the story of Mr. Best Friend from his perspective on why uh, why my character is solo cell phone. That's the name of my character, Mr. Best Friend. And uh, how society shunned him, so he shunned society and now is uh, solo. And I'm actually working on the second, uh, second edition of that. It'll be a little bit more cinematic. And practicing my video editing abilities. And I've also got some stuff on there about uh, Monsters and Memories, for those of you following that project. Did a lot of uh, streaming on that during the playtest in uh, December. I think most, I would guess most classic EverQuest viewers are following that project. But if you're not, Monsters and Memories is basically a new MMO in development that is being made with old MMO design philosophy. So corpse runs, experience loss, you know, darkness. Basically, it's it's a EverQuest in the Unreal Engine and a new new world to explore is kind of the best way to put it. Oops, I forgot to root. So no bodyguard on this spawn. And I didn't set my timer, so the next one's going to be a surprise. Earlier I was pulling these guys from out here, but they popped a Legget and a Bone Slaver and I, I'm not going to mess with them. It took me about a 50 minutes to get in here from outside, so I don't want to jeopardize and uh, lose the camp. Plus you have that Pather, if you guys saw him right there. He's running back and forth, so I almost wiped. I, I hit 5% health. And uh, was just barely able to eke out a Fane. Got super lucky. So I'm not going to push my luck again. Yeah, hopefully you guys are having a good Saturday. I got about a one hour left, and so then I'm going to have to go... Uh, pick up my girlfriend from school, like dent dentist school, not like my girlfriend's in like school. She's uh learning to be a dental assistant.
Then I got to figure out what to make for dinner. I feel like I just spent like like $300 on food and I, I don't even know what to cook. Has that ever happened to you guys? Like I bought all these groceries and I'm like, what am I going to make? Let's uh, let's go ahead and re rebuff here. Kentucky ninety Kentucky ninety one. My issue: I shop hungry, so I buy random stuff. Yeah, shopping hungry is like a proven proven way to spend twice as much as you probably should. I finally got my girlfriend to stop buying chocolate chip cookie dough. I swear, like, I gained probably five pounds over the winter just from chocolate chip cookies. She was making cookies, like, every day. And then I would, I would wake up in the morning. I always eat the same thing for breakfast every day. I eat two eggs, an English muffin, and two slices of turkey. But, man, those cookies would be like sitting out there in the Tupperware. And I would get out to my kitchen. I'd be frying up my eggs. And I'm like, as I'm doing that, I'm looking over at the cookies. And I'm like, mm. And I'm like, no, no, no. I always eat the same thing for breakfast. Try to keep my, keep my ma macro intake about the same throughout the day. So I eat the same thing for lunch too. But those cookies, man, they were like whispering to me. So then I'd go over and I'd break one in half. And I'd eat one while I was cooking my eggs and then it's like I black out and then when I come to I've eaten like three of them and my girlfriend's pissed whenever she gets up because she doesn't have any cookies left I'm like I don't know what you're talking about it just came over me I have no self-control stop buying the cookie dough I can't be trusted Yeah, as soon as she stopped buying the cookie dough, like five pounds just fell off me like that. Without even trying. But normally I do, I stick to pretty much the same food in the morning and the same thing for lunch every day. And really where I get off my off my regimen is dinner. Usually by the end of the day, I'm like, I want something good. I want pizza. I want chicken Alfredo. When I was super lean, I was not trying to brag, but I was like super lean uh, about a year ago. All I would eat for dinner was Greek yogurt. It's so depressing though, like to finish your day and you just have a, a bowl of Greek yogurt. I think that's why I don't do it anymore. I truly think though that's the best way to like stay the best way to stay lean, stay healthy is just know precisely what you're eating at all times. It's just super hard to maintain that. Cuz once you have a good regimen, you got to stick to it. Kentucky says when I worked out all the time, bulk was my favorite time. Yeah, everybody loves the bulk cuz you can get away with more. Did you do Kentucky? Did you do the, like the dirty bulk where you're like, I don't care. I don't care where my calories come from. I'm Burger King, Taco Bell, half a tub of ice cream. I did that once and 
it didn't it did not work for me i got bigger but i was like i was chonky i used to weigh about 60 pounds more than i do right now Kentucky says, oh, for sure, yeah. Dirty bulks are fun, but... I uh, I like the results from a, like a lean bulk better. I'm a runner. I like I like to run, so... I still lift. I, I do pull-ups, you know, the whole, the whole thing, but... I generally prefer to be lighter and faster and my my thought process is i realistically expect that i'll have to run away from something more often than i have to like lift a car off somebody or do some crazy like muscular thing But I don't, at one point I, I had dropped down to like 130 pounds. I was tiny. I was fast. I was super fast. And I had decent endurance from like the, the three to five mile. Like I could run three to five miles. Uh, shoot. One time was like 19. My three miles was like 19. So I was running about six minute mile, six, six minutes and some change. Uh, but then I was at work. And I had to open a door to a building. And I remember this. I, I was walking up to the door and I grabbed the door. And I go to pull it open and I'm like, ah, ah. And I had to use like both hands and my legs to open this door. And at that point I was like, okay, I need to, I need to put on some muscle here. <laughs> like, like I can't be struggling to open doors. So I, I bulked up about 15 pounds from there. Try to keep that happy medium. Let's see. I have no idea when these next guys are going to spawn. So normally I'll buff my pet like right before, uh, right before they spawn, but I didn't set my spawn timer. So they're probably just going to spawn and hit me upside the head. Yeah, after I did that bulk though, and I gained about 15 pounds, whenever I would go to run at first, like my legs were, were like, no, dude. And my knees would hurt, my ankles would hurt just from 15 pounds. But I didn't do it smart. I didn't lift uh, legs. I didn't get my legs stronger. I just put more weight on them. actually have a like a fitness test Monday I gotta go do a, a mile and a half timed run it's a condition of my employment I work for the military there's like zero chance that I'm gonna fail though I, I run all the time well, I don't want to say zero I think that's tempting fate but highly improbable Even when I was like real thick, even even when I had those extra 60 pounds on me, I was still able to run pretty decently, but I ran cross country and uh, track in high school. That kind of carried me through even, even when I was a fat boy. People would see me running and they'd be like, how's this short fat dude running so fast? All right, let's go ahead and buff just in case. I feel like they're coming. I 
And hopefully this is the one. Hopefully this is the spawn cycle where we get it. Kentucky says, I did ROTC Raiders. They made us run all the time, run to the point you would puke. That's the best time. I try to puke when I run. I think it's a like a badge of honor. ROTC Raiders, though, what does that mean? ROTC Raiders. I know what ROTC is. Is Raiders... That's the part I, I don't know what that is. I kind of feel like nowadays, in the military now, they wouldn't... They wouldn't want to be pushing those kids to the point where they puke. Somebody's going to sue them or somebody's going to die. There was a... Oh, shoot. I forgot to root this guy. There we go. When I was at basic training, uh, it's been quite a while now, uh, there was a kid who died from running. I think he had like an underlying condition though that he didn't. So when you go to join the military, before you even go anywhere, your recruiter has you fill out all this paperwork and you're supposed to disclose all this all your medical stuff and some of it can disqualify you. Uh, but sometimes it shouldn't happen, but sometimes maybe in the past, maybe it still happens now. I don't know. Recruiters would be like, no, 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 don't put that. It'll disqualify you. And if the recruiter is trying to make a quota, make a goal for the month, they're going to tell you, don't put that down. And then those people get to basic training and uh, yeah, like Kentucky just said, heart problems kept him out. If they didn't disclose that heart problem and then they're out there on a track running at basic training, they could die. So I think that's what happened with, uh, with that kid. Oh, we got whacked. We got whacked upside the head by this guy. Yeah, I was lucky. Uh, I had nothing that that disqualified me. Really grateful. I was a 20 year old kid with no skills, no real like good avenues for finding a job or a good job. And uh, the military took me and taught me everything I know. And there's just not many places out there that'll do that, right? Are there some downsides? Yes. Uh, one of them being, like, you can go somewhere and get shot at. But overall, I wouldn't trade it for anything. The amount of schooling I've gotten for free uh, from the military at this point is, like, close to $50,000. That's pretty good. Got a bachelor's paid for, got a master's paid for. They invest a lot. The military invests a lot in people. I'm actually going to Google that. What is an ROTC Raider? Army JROTC. Yeah, the Air Force does the like the same thing. They have ROTC for young officers to commission. They have our young cadets. Uh, they have the academy, and then they have old guys like me who uh, put a package in and get picked up. After we figure our figure our bull crap out or attempt to, I was if I'd have commissioned as a young young guy, I never would have made it. I was too immature. I was barely ready to be an NCO when I was an NCO.
I mean, even as a like an old guy, I was barely ready to be an officer when they made me an officer. I kind of had a rude awakening. I was like, oh, I can't just brute force my way through problems. I actually have to think about what I'm doing and how to do it effectively. My answer for most of my problems throughout my career was like, I'll just work 12 or 14 hour days till this gets done. That's not a smart approach. That's how you get burnt out. And I definitely got burnt out at one point. Like there was a point probably when I'd been in about five years where I would wake up in the morning and I would put on my uniform and I'd be like, yeah, let's go. You know, I'm super excited to be here. Love the military. Love what I'm doing. And then around year 10, it was like the point where I would get up and I'd be like, oh man, here we go again. Like, like I realized there was one base I worked at where I had about a 20 minute drive through some country roads on my way to and from work. Super peaceful. Nothing like where I live now where people drive like crazy and I hate driving anywhere. Super nice drive. Country roads, you know, driving by churches, houses, beautiful forest. And about two thirds of the way through the drive, I would be like, dude, why? I'd be like this. I'd be like, why do my forearms hurt? Why does my neck hurt? And then I was like, ah, I'm freaking like angrily gripping the steering wheel, just being stressed and, and pissed off. And uh, really had to take a step back and be like, okay. And then I went to Africa. They sent me to Africa. And I got to live in a tent city, which you think would be stressful because there was like bad guys there. There was bad stuff going on all around us. And for four months, really, we didn't have a whole lot to do because I was in a rescue unit. So we were on standby waiting for anybody to get hurt, get shot, whatever. And then we would go pick them up. Uh, but it was a very like, very peaceful time like nobody was getting messed up thank goodness and about a month in i was like ah like all of a sudden i could breathe again i started realizing a lot of the stuff that i was stressing out about wasn't as big of a deal as i thought it was like here i am in one of the most dangerous lawless countries in the world in the eastern african horn of africa and i was like zen <laughs> it was so weird because like things that seem like a big deal when you're sitting at a traffic light in America really aren't that big of a deal when you're in a country where people are every day dying. So I came back with like a totally different perspective. Probably one of the best experiences of my life. Kentucky says, yeah, I did that with my current job. I hit burnt out, burnout. I've taken a month of vacation just to chill a bit. That's awesome. Yeah, my, uh, my job now is probably 10 times more stressful than it was back then. But I'm like 10 times less stressed out, if that makes sense. But it just all comes back to that perspective because up to that point, I'd never gone overseas. And when I was over there, one of the older guys that was over there with me, he was like, hey, man, let's talk. Like, And he wasn't a jerk about it. He was super cool about it. He's like, you are stressing yourself out over nothing, man. Like, look where we're at. Like, everything's getting done. Everybody's doing everything they need to do. Like you don't gotta, you don't gotta stress. He's like, you'll know when, when you need to stress. I was like, oh yeah. And then when I came back, everybody was like, what happened to you? And I lost a ton of weight over there too. Probably cause I wasn't stressed anymore. I was running all the time. I was eating healthy. 
I just think I was on the treadmill of stress, just sprinting away for so long. And finally it was like somebody slapped me and knocked me off of it. Ooh, this is like a perfect song for this, uh, for this talk, for this topic. I will say now, now that I've been in, in the military for quite a while, I'm actually excited to get out and do a different job though. I feel like I've gotten a lot of skills out of, uh, out of the military. Like there's times where, where my girlfriend, she'll complain about her managers and the things they do. And I'm just like, I would handle that so differently than those managers. And we just hit 66% to level 48. That's two thirds for those of you that, that do math. I don't do math, uh, at least not very well. But I do know that is two thirds. Let's get progress for today. About 32% uh, that I've made on the last two to three hours. I feel like Temple of Droga is a, is a pretty good spot for the high 40s. Yeah, this uh this necro here, he's he's all self found. Everything on him I've I've found myself. Um last night I got the earring of essence here out of Temple of Droga. This is a HP plus thirty earring. It's a decently rare drop off Soothsayer Dregzak up in the temple area. The other gear that I've gotten Shearbone mask as well as the bat skull earring and the bat fang headbands. I got all that off of Uwamp. Oh, not only is this guy solo cell phone, he's Kunark only, so I can't leave Kunark to get anything. So I got those off Uwamp in Timorous Deep. And then most of the rest of the stuff you see here I got in Down Near. The Visceral Dagger. This is a quest in down there. That one took me quite a while. There's uh, three pieces you got to farm for that. And two of them are, are pretty tough camps for a level 30. I think I was about level 35 when I started. And then the rarest item that I've gotten is the Bracer of the Hidden. This dropped off the Sarnax in Lake of Ill Omen. And this is what I'm using to do like a GCD reset. Because it's an instant cast C and Viz. And that goes for about 7,000 plat. Or so I'm told. I got really lucky getting a GCD reset pretty early on. I got that maybe around level 20. Maybe 22. Somewhere, somewhere thereabouts. Then yeah, I do have a YouTube if you guys want to check it out. It's uh, linked in the channel bio or Twitch. And uh, most of it's just replays of my old streams, but I also have stuff on Monsters and Memories if you guys are interested in that. As well as uh, Discord if you guys are interested in that. And right now my plans are get Mr. Best Friend up to level 60, finish out this challenge, I don't want to leave my my character unfinished. I want to have a playlist on YouTube that goes from the, the start to the end. And hopefully I finish that around May. Because in May, if you guys follow EQ, there will be a new TLP coming out. And so I'll probably jump on the TLP uh, once that's done. So I've got a little bit of a timer here. I got to get up 13 more levels before May. 
And I started this guy in September. And if you do go back, please don't judge. If you guys go back to the old YouTube videos uh, and check them out, please don't judge. It was like, it was super janky. Like I was using the headset microphone. It sounded terrible. Uh, no green screen. I had like this fake green screen that would eat like half my CPU cycles to create a sort of green screen effect around me. It, it's funny to actually go back and look at it and make fun of me. Uh, Cause it is kind of funny to see. Uh, old webcam. So the webcam was super grainy and nasty looking. I like going back and watching them sometimes just to see how, how much it's uh, changed. And then if you go way back on my YouTube lives, there's uh, streams from like 2021 when I used to stream just whatever I was doing. So it'd be like today I'm streaming Diablo 1, tomorrow it's me playing chess, uh, playing roguelikes. It was kind of funny. I was just dipping my toes in it, seeing what I wanted to do. And I used to go by uh, X Huck Nasty was the, the handle that I went by. So some of you, if you've been around Twitch a while, you might recognize that name. And then earlier, uh, or later last year, I rebranded as MMocracy. Mainly because MMOs are kind of my thing. I'll uh, never say never that I, I won't ever stream anything else, but I, I mainly stream MMOs. Zukin, what's up? Hey, I was just talking about your uh, about your game. So uh, stream, this is Zukin Sculpts. He's a developer, uh, I think artist, right? You're an artist for Monsters and Memories, the game I was talking about earlier. Kentucky says, I'm currently playing TLP, doing a druid, enjoying it pretty well. Are you on Mischief or uh, Oakwind? Zukin says, yep, 3D art. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, Zukin. Not, uh, I'm not going to be one of those guys. I'm not going to be one of those people who's like, playtest when? Playtest when? But uh, definitely looking forward to the next playtest. I had an absolute blast on the last one. If you guys really want to know what Monsters and Memories is all about from uh, my perspective, I did make a pretty, uh, what's the right word, digestible video. It's about 13 minutes, I think. Uh, I'll go ahead and link it. Um, please humor me with my antics. I was kind of getting into video editing, so there's some like goofy stuff in there. It's not, it's not quite direct and to the point. Uh, at least right away. But that is found here. And that kind of goes through what, what I did during the uh, two-day play test. Because Monsters and Memories, it's in development. Uh, so there's a lot of things that are unfinished. But the the M&M team is super transparent. And they're showing everybody all the work that they're doing. Unlike, I don't know, some other projects out there that asked for money, which Monsters and Memories has not, and I don't think they ever will ask for money. And they're demonstrating uh, everything that they're doing through playtests. So if you guys want to check that out, that kind of goes through uh, what I did on my two-day playtest. Zukin says, haha, glad you enjoyed it. Would love to have another one. We're working on stuff, so the engine parts are all over the floor. Yeah, no, totally get it. I just roll my eyes when I look at the Discord and everybody's like, when's the next play test? I'm like, just just let them work. <laughs> let, let them do what they need to do. The game is great. They're going to make it better. Have a little faith. Kentucky says, yeah, Mischief, I've done mainly Molo. Able to hold my own pretty well. I just put a video up on my YouTube of me playing on the test server where I was doing some moloing. The test server is like crazy, dude. 
I got on there and within 10 minutes, I had 3 million platinum mailed to me. I was level 25 because you can just type slash test buff and it made me level 25 right off the bat. I was already like running through K Sora and killing everything within two hours. Yeah, Zukin is a streamer as well. If you guys want to check out his uh, his stuff, he streams the actual 3D art uh, development, 3D art modeling, which is pretty interesting stuff. I definitely couldn't do it. I am not uh, artistic in that way. If I made a game, you guys would look at it and be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> It would be embarrassing if I made art for a game. All right, next spawn cycle happens here in 25 seconds. Let's hope. Cross your fingers for me, stream, that we get the goblin bodyguard because I may get, you know what, I'm going to get one more spawn cycle after this. So hopefully getting in here is not all for nothing. Took me almost an hour to break into this camp. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do the next TLP. I'm going to hang it up on P99 for... for a little while. Zukin asks, how's the Necro? You have experience playing one previously? Actually, no, uh, but I love the Necro. I guess yes and no. I did on the red server... <laughs> I got a Necro to like, I don't know, 29. But I don't think that really counts. I was telling everybody earlier, this is the most consistently I've ever played a character on EverQuest in my 20 plus years of playing. I think I'm on day 141 of the solo self-found challenge. And this Necro is Kunark only, so only only solo, only self-found, and never never have left Kunark. Which makes for some interesting uh, dynamics, like these sleeves here. So if you looked at these sleeves on any other character, you'd see Int 1, Mana 10, Strength 3, and you'd be like, eh, they're, they're not great. These are my best-in-slot sleeves <laughs> for this character. Like, I will never change these sleeves out. And I spent probably 20 hours camping them. And they're worth 10 plat, maybe. Zukin says, was thinking I'd make an XR Necro on Quorm when Kunark drops. I think that's smart. The health regen is so good. I think it's worth waiting for. There's very few race class combos where it's Basically, you have to do this, or, or it's highly advised, and XR Necro is pretty much the only one. Sad Horse, what's up? I needed your luck. I'm so glad you're here. I've been camping for three and a half hours on one item. This is, uh, Sad Horse is my girlfriend. She's probably not supposed to be on here, but everybody say hi to Sad Horse. She occasionally streams, uh... Animal Crossing. But... Uh, I'll tell a little story. So, for most of last year, I was playing Diablo 2, solo cell phone, a lot. I was playing a lot of Diablo 2. I wasn't streaming, I was just playing. And it seemed like every time she walked in the room, if she was out at the kitchen, if she was in, a, in, in the other room... Uh, doing crafts. She does a lot of arts and crafts. As soon as she would walk in, I would get the rare drop I was trying to get. And then, uh, about a month ago, I was trying to get the Visceral Dagger and it was a really tough camp. Like this camp had killed me probably three or four times trying to break into it. And I finally got it broken and I had five hours. I had five complete hours that I could camp this Visceral Dagger uh, quest item and i was like yes i've got five hours that dagger is going to be mine 
four hours and 45 minutes into it, I've got one spawn left and I got to go pick her up from, uh, from work. I'm like, man, one spawn left. I'm probably not going to get it. What a bummer. I'm going to have to come back, break this camp again, probably die. She pops into my stream. We all say hi. Very next spawn. Last spawn I could do for the day. And it dropped. It was the placeholder was the, the guy I needed and the item dropped. So hopefully that, that uh, happens again here. She is good luck. Oh, I, I started getting the blue wheel of death. That scared me. I thought my EQ crashed. But yeah, if you guys haven't heard about Monsters and Memories and you like old school MMOs, uh, like classic, you know, corpse runs, deaths, costing experience, all that, definitely go check them out. There's a ton of stuff out there on YouTube about it already. It's small, but it's it's growing. And I have a feeling once it, it gets even more uh, close to finish, the hype is going to continue to grow. So I'm really looking forward to it. The other cool thing is if you get in on the, the play test now, there's like no info out there about most everything in the game. So it feels almost like when EQ first came out and people didn't know anything about the game. Like, do you guys remember back in the day on EQ when people would say you couldn't use a uh, slashing weapon if you wanted to get a high quality pelt from a wolf? That was like a rumor back then. And it, it's kind of like that right now on Monsters and Memories. Like, people don't really know where everything's at. There's no real leather of in information out there telling you, hey, go here to do this quest. And it's a really neat time to play the game whenever they do have the servers up. I feel like that alone makes it worth it. As much as I love the wiki on P99, as much as I love being able to know everything about whatever it is I'm doing, it's a little bit more immersive when, when no one really knows anything. Uh, one more spawn on this cycle. Kentucky says, yeah, MMO is like, wow, before a patch comes out, everything is posted online. Yeah, everybody data farms everything now. Or it's been tested on a PTR. Yeah, m and is like totally different. Like I remember we ran, we ran out... This group I was in, we were just looking for a, a place to level. And we ran up this like long winding canyon and we found all these great views. And that's all on that video I linked. And then we found a little spot off to the left where there was a bunch of goblins outside of a fort. And we stopped there and we just killed goblins for a couple hours. Everybody got a bunch of levels. The next day I logged in and one of the players I was with the day prior he actually went inside the fort and it was like a whole dungeon and no one knew that it was a dungeon. Stuff like that. It's really cool to figure it out uh, with, with everybody versus like P99. Most everybody knows or they know where to go to get the information or they already know the information. Ah, uh, it's a flame dowser. No bodyguard. <laughs> These guys actually hit pretty hard. I like how that dookie does pushes my uh, my pet back.
Well, that is unfortunate. I was hoping we would get this done today. That way I can move on to something else. So uh, for those of you just joining, I'm camping the Circlet of Shadows down in Temple of Droga. You guys like the cup? That's a... Uh, I know it's probably hard to see, but that's Croatia. I got this in when I was in Europe. That says Hrvatska or Vetska. That that's like how Cro. I didn't know this till I went there. That's how Croatians spell Croatia. Like I got over there and I was like, "What's what's Hrvatska?" They're like, "That's Croatia, dummy." <laughs> Croatia has probably the most. Friendly Europeans I have ever met. <clears throat> I've only been to Europe twice. Well, three times, but one time just passing through. And uh, let's see, Cheeto says, I thought the bodyguard was the roamer that wanders up to the chief. Huh, interesting. Maybe I need to kill that guy. Uh, what I read on the wiki was you can camp this room, that room, and another room down there, and it can spawn in any of these three. Anyway, I went to, the first time I really went to Europe, I went to uh, Sicily. And Italians, like, they don't like Americans, for the most part. I'm not going to stereotype all Italians, but my experience was many of them did not like us. They didn't like us being there. And you just kind of get used to it and deal with it. But then I went to Croatia. And as soon as somebody learned you were American, they like they just wanted to talk your ear off. They're like, oh, America, that's awesome. I went to America. I went to New Orleans. I was in New York. Like, Totally different than uh, Italy. Like Italy, when you, you go to Italy, you go to check into your hotel. Maybe if you're in like a tourist spot, it's different. But where I was at, they were like, oh, yeah, here you go. Here's your key. Don't be so loud. <laughs> yeah, I had a great time in uh in Croatia. Everything was like super inexpensive too. And the food, oh my gosh, the food was so good. Everything's like fresh. It doesn't taste all processed. Yeah, thanks for the tip. Uh, Cheetos, I may actually start trying to grab that roamer. It's just scary pulling them out of there because there's two right here. And then there's another one on the other side of this wall. But I have one, one cycle left. Hopefully we get lucky. Go ahead and queue up my uh, my buffs. Yeah, I got to spend two weeks over there last uh, last spring, and we stayed pretty much right on the water. Uh, there was a place that sold gelato, like twenty five feet out the back of the hotel. Super safe area. Pretty pretty good stuff. And the work really wasn't uh the work really wasn't that stressful either. Like when we got there, <clears throat> they told us we were gonna be flying a lot, and then they just kept canceling the the flights and I was like, eh, okay. Cheeto says, that is just where I got him when I played on a TLP. Okay, still good to know. Hey, I'm I'm down to try anything to try to get this uh get this done. I think it'd just be nice to have Circle of Shadows is a clicky and viz. It's a good little utility tool. 
also helps when you're charming. Because you can use it to break charm. I tried camping that goblin Gazugi ring on my enchanter once. It's such a pain. I don't think I really fully committed to it, though. I did maybe four hours or so. Cheeto says, if you are going to Howling Stones, you will want it. Funny you mentioned that. So we were talking about going to Howling Stones earlier. And uh, being that I'm Kunark only, I'm probably going to end up having to go there. So definitely uh, just debating on when is the right time. Like what, what level is the right level to go to Howling Stones? <clears throat> so if you guys know, if you have experience with that, go ahead and let me know. For my YouTube viewers, drop it in the comments. Right now, I'm looking at going at 49. But being that I'm solo cell phone, I won't have... I Very unlikely that I'll have my pet, my level 49 pet, or the Lich spell, because I have to research all that on my own. So I have to find the research components before I can get the spells. That's a uh, interesting looking banner the goblins have here. So fun fact, goblins are not native to Kunark. They actually came here uh, after the fact and started scooping up land. When the Empire of Ick or whatever fell the Ixar Empire. We'll go ahead and get some fresh buffs. Yeah, one of the big reasons why I wanted to do Kunark only is I always really liked Kunark when I used to play back in the day as like a, a young kid, a teenager, or whatever. And I really wanted to just immerse myself in it, learn more about it. Because uh, like down near, I could probably navigate down near with a blindfold now. Probably not, but you guys get what I'm saying. And uh, that was a dungeon that I never went to. In 2000, 2001, when I used to play. Uh, same thing with Temple of Droga. And actually, it confuses me, even on P99. Every time I slash through this zone, all I ever see is level 50 plus people here. I don't know why more level 30s that are like 35s, level 40s out in Frontier Mountains, why they don't come down here. Because it's, it's actually a really good experience. So I've definitely gotten more more experience and more acquainted with the Kunark like dungeons. I also learned that Kunark really doesn't have a whole lot for caster gear until the level like 40 range. Like I was pretty much wearing silk armor from level 1 to 40. It was a great day when I could go camp uh, Uwamp out in Timorous Deep, the level 35 shaman, because he drops 
I think three or four different items that have intelligence on them. <laughs> Up to that point, I had like 85 intelligence. It was, it was miserable. My research would fail all the time. I used to joke Mr. Best Friend was pretty dumb. Now I'm sitting at 137. It's not, it's not great, but it's not bad. This Earring of Essence that I got, I like this. Even though it doesn't have Int on it, it's got 30 HP. Necros regen mana so fast that HP is actually really good for him. And I've gotten a couple drops in here, but nothing nothing really notable. This uh, Mountain Death Belt dropped off a Madden Berry Knight. I got really scared because Mr. Best Friend has never killed a Berry Knight until today. And a Berry Knight spawns in this room. It's a rare spawn, but it's, it spawns in here. And if you don't know, the Berry Knight are the, like the badgers that you see out walking around. As soon as you kill one badger, you lose rep with the badgers forever, and you can't get it back. And now all badgers everywhere in Kunark, or almost every badger, becomes KOS. As Zukin says, I've never not killed one. A lot of people don't know, because they just go out to field a bone, and they kill one before they realize what they're doing. And they don't realize that it makes the entire Kern's basement really difficult to navigate, because there's a ton of badgers down there. It makes Frontier Mountains more dangerous. It probably makes other places more dangerous. So here I am in the middle of this camp, and it was right after the wipe, and I was really low on health, really low on mana, and I was trying to real quick look in the wiki to see if killing this badger was going to give me a negative faction hit, and luckily it didn't. And uh, that would have made... So I like making lore videos for Mr. Best Friend. Uh, so if you guys are interested, I'll go ahead and drop it in the chat. I made a like a lore video that explains why Mr. Best Friend is in fact solo cell phone. And uh, if I had lost my badger rep today, let's just say that would have made filming my next lore video a lot harder. But I'll go ahead and drop that there in case anybody wants to watch. Uh, be, be forgiving. That was one of the first videos I ever made or edited. <laughs> so I, I was definitely learning as I, I go, and I still am. Uh, but I am really proud of some of the stuff I've been able to do. For example, I've taken a map of Norath, and I've made it into a 3D model. You guys can see I've made it so you can fly it, like fly over it. Or like there. I took Norath and turned it into a globe. Some cool things you can do in uh, video editing. And I'm glad I figured it out because now I don't have to go on to Fiverr and pay somebody else to do it. Although Zukin, Zukin's probably looking at this and he's like, rookie. <laughs> oh, there, speak of the devil, there's that, there's that Barry Nye there. Kentucky says, got it pulled up. Well, give me something to watch while I rot things. Yeah, I appreciate that. I will say my old videos, the uh, microphone quality is not the best. Took me a little while to get that figured out. Still working on it, still tweaking it here and there. It's definitely better than it was. 
Oh. Bro just dropped like a complete heal on himself. <laughs> Kick that heal, pet. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be low, low on mana here. Okay, I'm not gonna nuke because I think the pet can get him down. There we go. There's another one of those belts. <laughs> Zugan says, Psh, you're good, dude. I've been having a weird issue with my camera going out lately. Not sure what's up. Just in, uh, just in OBS or do you, do you talking for like your streaming software or the camera hardware itself? I know when I was using my laptop camera, not the, the webcam, uh, the Logitech one I ended up getting, it would like freeze when I would switch scenes. So if I switch between the wiki to the game, it would have me like frozen like this, like <laughs> like in the most awkward, uh, awkward position. Zukin says, "I hear a pop sound. I hear a pop sound. That's that's not good." And the camera goes out for a second, and then comes back. Yeah, the only thing I could think is maybe drivers. Might be a driver issue, but oh, I don't know. OBS is weird. I, honestly, I'm thinking about replacing it. But I have so much work. I've put dozens of hours into just getting my OBS settings right. And it's when you when you first start streaming as like a gamer, if you're a gamer like me, you want to play a game. And it was a tough pill for me to swallow when I first started where I was like, I have to sit down at OBS, which is just a program. It's not a game and like tweak little things, change filters on microphones, you know, set up scenes, set up transitions. Uh, I've gotten over it now. Like I'll sit down at OBS and burn two, three hours just playing with stuff. But yeah, I, I want to replace it because I'm not really a huge fan of it. It does too many weird things. Like, for example, when I start a new stream up, I have to go reassign, like, all the audio. So Spotify, EverQuest, because it won't remember the windows. So sometimes I'll start a stream, and I'll go 20 minutes before I realize no one can hear the game audio. Zukin says, dude, same. I've tweaked my OBS so much. Yeah, it's, it becomes like a labor of love. Zukin says, wait, OBS or Streamlabs OBS? So I'm just using like regular OBS. I've looked into Streamlabs OBS. Can you import can you import your settings from one to the other? Because I'll be more apt to switch if I can just drag drop settings basically. Zukin says, weird that it's forgetting your audio stuff. Yeah, it's all, so all of my audio is set up to an audio controller stream or a scene. That way I can split the, like Spotify doesn't get saved on Twitch anymore because you'll get a copyright strike. Uh, the game audio is on its own thing. So I'm not running like the desktop audio like most people do or a lot of people do when they start. Uh, that way like I could have other stuff playing in the background and it won't, nobody's going to be able to hear it. <clears throat> and then I, yeah, I have to go back in and reassign those windows every time I launch OBS. All right. Last spawn. Come on bodyguard. Wish me luck stream. Four hours of camping. Four hours of camping. One spawn left. Will he get it? Apparently the spawn is not... Uh, the spawn is rare, but the drop is not that rare. That's kind of what I'm reading. 
So if I can just get this guy to spawn, we would hopefully get it first try. And hopefully this isn't like the lumpy goo. I camped the wrong lumpy goo for like four hours in down here. I didn't realize they had different drop tables. There's two different lumpy goos. That was embarrassing. Nope, it's a goblin depredator. Zukin says, personally, I don't think Streamlabs OBS is as good. It's just a fork of the original OBS anyway. I'd recommend sticking with what you got and maybe figure out an audio solution, yeah. Yeah, it's really not, it's not a huge deal and I I generally remember now every time. Zukin says, audio is the trickiest part in my experience. Yeah, I say that on stream all the time. Audio is the hardest part about streaming. Setting up a, a window capture and a webcam is super easy. It's It's getting the audio right. Let's see, we finished out the day with 17 goblin skins. I made about 70 plat. No circlet of shadow. Where do I go? I know where to go. I know of a good safe spot. What a bummer. I'm just going to look and see if he's up. No, he's not up. Let's see if we can make it back. It's a pretty simple run back up to the pool from uh, Chief Chief Rock, I guess. Oh, that's one, two. I saw that guy get trained. He trained himself the other day and died. I felt bad for him. Here is the safe spot. This is a safe spot to park your character and camp, summon, pet, summon pets, buff, whatever you need to do. All right. Well, it was a great Saturday stream. I want to thank everybody for watching. For my YouTube viewers, thank you for, for your support as well. I always like to end the stream by saying you've got 70,000 other streams to watch on Twitch, and today you chose mine. I am very humble and very grateful for your viewership. And uh, if you guys like what I'm doing here, you want to continue to follow the project, go ahead and drop me a follow on Twitch. Check out my YouTube. Subscribe there too. That helps me out a bunch.